This is breaking news. There's a storm expected to arrive tomorrow morning. The snow is expected to reach, uh, uh, you know, eight inches or more uh, in the city, maybe more in the parts north. Um, and it's supposed to start falling around 8 a.m. Uh, with a wintry mix beforehand, which is going to create a mess. Um, no matter what happens, MTA is going to be ready. We have a detailed plan in place to deal with uh, weather and to deliver safe service to New Yorkers, not just for folks who are on their way to the office in the morning, but even those who are coming home from work at that time. New York is a 24-7 city. MTA runs 24-7, and we know riders in all kinds of situations, keeping all kinds of schedules, need to be able to rely on mass transit. People are making decisions now about whether to go into work tonight, and we recognize that many schools may be closed or operating remotely. But if you are traveling, MTA will be operating, and we intend to get you where you're headed, not to leave anybody stranded. Right now, we can expect, we are expecting to run normal service on buses, on subways, on Long Island Railroad, and on paratransit, and we're going to be running a very robust but slightly modified schedule on Metro North. Of course, ridership is likely to be lower, but we still expect to carry more customers tomorrow than any other system in the United States done on their busiest days. Personnel and equipment are going to be in place beforehand, ready to deal with whatever is coming and to prepare. The subways and the commuter railroads are deploying snow-fighting trains, tow trucks, de-icing systems to protect the tracks and the switches. That's the key, tracks and switches. Electric trains are being fitted with special third rail shoes to prevent snow from accumulating on top of those electric third rail uh, items. And air brake lines are purged of moisture to prevent freezing. Crews are going to have equipment on hand throughout the system to respond quickly to issues or obstructions like down trees. We put the equipment all over the system in the expectation that that may take place. For the subways, we know that the underground portions are less vulnerable during storms, but we are mindful that there are 220 miles of New York City subway that are outdoors, particularly on the A and B, B and Q lines, a couple of lines that I ride myself on my way to and from, and also on the five and seven trains. Those are the trains most vulnerable because they do have significant outdoor portions. Trains may be moved inside, stored underground in anticipation of heavy snow and ice. We know how to, how to position trains to limit that exposure. But in any case, the bus network is prepared to pick up the slack. We have 35 snow fighting vehicles on st standby to clear our bus routes. And as you can see right behind me, um, we are starting the process of getting the, the tires the wheels all chained up so that they can be ready to operate uh, right on time tomorrow. Articulated buses are going to be taken out of service overnight, so to, to, to maximize that maneuverability that becomes necessary in snow. And bus managers have the technology that tracks headways and service in real time so that they can make changes if needed on the fly. We'll be closely monitoring our crew availability on all of our transit modes. Not to be forgotten, the paratransit operation, the accessoride vans plus the uh, four-hour black cars that carry 30 to 40,000 customers every day are also going to be open and operating. We need those folks who rely on that system to be able to get around as well. On bridges and tunnels, the MTA bridges and tunnels, we've got almost 9,000 tons of de-icing uh, material ready and 115 pieces of equipment actually in position right now. Roadway sensors are be, will be giving us real-time updates on those roadway conditions on the bridges and tunnels, and we may put in place additional restrictions if required. 
In that case, there's always going to be intensive signage and messaging on highways and other customer communications to let the motorists know if there are outages or limitations on the bridge and tunnel operations. Listen, we encourage riders across all transit modes to keep close eye on all of the usual customer communications channels for the commuter railroads, the train time app, the My MTA app, especially useful for bus and subway customers, social media, the digital screens that now have been deployed throughout the stations and throughout our system. But especially I want to pitch for MTA service alerts, which you can, can send you a real-time personalized email or text for your commute on your particular ride. You can sign up for those if you haven't done so already on the MTA website, mta.info slash notify. mta.info slash notify. If you go there, you can sign up for these real-time service alerts that will tell you about your particular train or bus and how it's doing. Listen, before I go to Q&A, I want to thank our incredible MTA workforce. Folks are with us in this bus terminal, bus depot right now, but all throughout the MTA system, they do amazing work, especially stepping up in these kinds of weather emergencies. Um, with that, we're happy to take your questions. All right, and we have today with us the heads of subways, buses, chief customer officer, and the Metro North Railroad as well. We'll start with Mark Santia, right over here to your left, sir, from WN. BC. Mark. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much. Um, can you talk a little bit? You mentioned that everything looks to be running on time, but there's going to be a slightly modified schedule for Metro North. Can you explain that a little bit? For sure. Metro I'm going to let Kathy Rinaldi do it. Go ahead, Kathy. Hi. As Janice said in his remarks, it's still quite a robust schedule. I mean, we want to be there tomorrow for anybody who needs to travel, but realistically speaking, we're probably not going to see as many people. So what we're trying to do is put together a schedule that maximizes the reliability of our system by not having as many switching moves over certain switch locations that tend to get a little bit iced up over a storm like this. So we have a, a, a set plan that we go to for events like this, and we're going to go to that plan. So it's still going to be a pretty high level of service during the peak. And yeah, people should go, excuse me. People should go to the Train Time app to double check what those service modifications are. But they are modifications. It's still quite a robust service plan. All right, we go to the other coast where Evan Simko Bednarski is standing by from the New York Daily News. Evan. Hey, Jenna. Uh, so, just given the weather outside right now, um, the fact that uh, I'm a bit contrarian and it's above 40, uh, in the event that snow doesn't stick, you know, we're, we're taking the time to get the buses ready. Will there be a delay if the trains have to come off in the morning because it's rain? Frank, do you want to take that one? No, there will be no delay in pullouts. If there's, we would deploy our buses, and then we have trips that buses return, and as the buses return, we'll remove the chains and just rotate them out, business as usual. All right, Nolan Hicks is over there from the New York Post. Nolan? Yeah, uh, hi. Um, so, to people who have seen the trains get stuck before, what do you say to them? Well, that's a sort of a generalization. What I, what I actually see is that the MTA has again and again demonstrated that we perform an incredibly high level during weather emergencies. Um, but in response to the snarky question, I'll turn it over to Demetrius Christian. So end to end, we are prepared to, to provide a great service to our customers, whether it's communicating them to them in advance what service issues we have on the system. So check the mta.info uh, dot, dot uh, for, uh, for service alerts. Um, but we're there, salt and salmon stations. We'll have roughly 4,000 employees out tonight to prep to make sure that our stations, our platforms are in great shape. Um, we have teams coming out to do handle our switches and uh, to, to de-ice the third rail so that the trains can get by smoothly. So ultimately, we are prepared to be able to provide full service uh, for our customers. Sometimes when there's weather, weather, people take pictures of the fires that get set on the tracks and, and on the switches to keep them from freezing up. Can you just sort of explain to people what exactly is going on there and why it's not an issue? 
so uh, the only locations that we generally have pots which look like fires are locations that are a little more dated. Generally, they're in our yards, but all of our newer facilities have electric uh, heaters uh, for both um, switch heaters and along our, our third rails. So. And moving on, that's Kelly Mena right there from Spectrum's New York One. Kelly. Hi, yes. Excellent. First time at one of these. Thank you. Um, my question is, the um, em emergency management said today that other things they're looking out for is coastal flooding, water, things like that. Is the MTA and the, and the transportation system prepared for that type? I know you mentioned right. snow, but what happens if water or anything like that? L listen, uh, Kelly, we, we on a on a dry day, we pump 13 million gallons out of the subway system. And as we've shown again and again, when, when rain comes, even torrential rainfall that the city's uh, storm sewer system can't accommodate, we figure out how to keep the trains running. So I'm not concerned. But in answer to your question about coastal flooding, we've invested $7 billion since Hurricane, uh, Superstorm Sandy in keeping those coastal areas, those areas that are vulnerable to coastal surge uh, from getting overwhelmed, covering up entrances, uh, covering grates and vents, uh, and installing submarine type doors in many locations. We have a lot of protection against coastal surge. That issue I'm confident we will not be uh, deterred by. And back there in the mezzanine, it's Greg Mocker from PIX11, Chairman. Greg. Uh, Chairman, some of the other storms this winter kind of uh, ended up being slush or, or not as much. Are you expecting this to be a different one? Are you changing your messaging to people? Uh, you kind of cutting through the, the forecast fatigue a little bit that might come uh, when it ends up being nothing? Listen, to be, to, to be a, a modern person means you have a healthy skepticism about all weather predictions, but it's our responsibility at the MTA to plan for what is being forecast. And right now, the forecast is of heavy snow, especially in the areas to the north and west of the city. And we're planning to, uh, to, to deal with that, make sure we can keep the system running. If it doesn't come, the system's going to be running, and we will have been done, done the preparation the public expects of us. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you very Wait, much. Uh, the, the third rail cleaning you were talking about, will that be more prevalent in the northern suburbs where the snow is expected to be of a much higher accumulation? I, I, I would say this, you know, we have, throughout the system, we have those special shoes that push snow off of the third rail. What Demetrius is talking about is how do we deal with the vulnerability, the icing conditions on switches and in interlockings. So we, we will be doing it throughout the system, but there is, as we said, those special uh, the special equipment that knocks snow off of the electric third rail uh, to make sure that we can run, and we use that pretty heavily throughout the system. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for those monitoring the live stream. We're going to send you some B-roll of the chaining of the buses. This has been breaking news.